So welcome. So Almapura. I think I need to probably start there because everything that I do is centered around this idea called Almapura, which actually means pure soul. So I have been a medium ever since I was about four years old. That's when I first started to recognize that I was seeing family, and family members and friends in heaven. And I kind of thought that everybody else did that too until I was in the first grade when I got in trouble for doing that in my Catholic school. So in understanding that during the journey of my life, um, my father was a deacon in the Catholic Church. And so he challenged me quite a bit during the course of my life that with what I was doing and the people that I was talking to in heaven, that that didn't totally align with my faith of Catholicism. Although my grandmother is very much my, my principal spirit guide, both on earth and in heaven, and she told me that it was right according and in line with my faith. So I went on a journey this whole time in my life trying to figure out how is it possible that I can see somebody in heaven, that I can talk to them. Mom says, Grandpa's dead, he's sitting at the kitchen table. I didn't know how any of this happened at all. I had no idea. I didn't know that um, everybody couldn't do it, and I didn't know how they were able to talk to me. I didn't know why their bodies looked different than mine. I could see through their bodies. I couldn't see through my own body, couldn't see through my mom's body. So from my childhood perspective, even though Christian faith teaches us that we are mind, body, soul, that we have a human self, that we have a spiritual self, even though our faith teaches us that, and that is a core belief that most of us try to attain during the course of our life, I was confused about that because I was a human being, but when I was looking at somebody in heaven, they were a spiritual being. So in my mind, I thought, you know what? First, you're alive and you have a body just like this, and then when you die, and you lose this body, you become that other thing. You become like my grandfather or like my grandmother. And then you are that. I didn't really have an awareness that that is who I am now with a body. I didn't have that awareness. So I went through the course of my life kind of trying to prove to myself and to my parents and to the people in my life that I wasn't crazy, I wasn't psychotic, the voices I were hearing were actually you know, I was actually hearing them and that the things that were happening to me were actually happening, that I didn't have a psychotic disorder and that I didn't have hypochondria and that I wasn't a hypochondriac and that's why they were rushing me to the hospital, like all of these different things. So needless to say, I did get excused from my household when I was about 15, 16 years old, and later joined the military. So when I was in the military, um, things started happening. My grandmother passed away, and she was the person that I really went to for all of my questions about the people in heaven, and she's really the person that guided me through the whole journey, but she was in heaven, so she wasn't really available per se to me for the purpose of asking just everyday questions. I started noticing that things were happening to me. I was jumping in a foxhole with people in my platoon at a field operation, and Grandma Juanita was sitting in the foxhole, and the soldier there, I said, you got a Grandma Juanita? He's like, yeah, but she's dead. I'm like, yeah, she's in our foxhole. So a little while after that, I started to become known as the Marine who talked to dead people. And so people started knocking on my doors. And that's how all of this happened, although they kept asking me, how do you do that? I was like, I don't know. I don't know, you could come over, we could play spades, we could play poker while we wait for Grandma to show up. And sometimes Grandma would show up in an hour, and sometimes it would be three hours. So it was just me waiting for them to connect with me. Because I did this a long time in my life up until that point, people used to tell me I had a gift. Oh, you have such a gift. Oh, what a gift you have. And I believed that. I did believe that I was blessed or that I felt so happy to be able to have this connection with people in heaven. Until my grandma died, until my mom died, and people were coming to see me for a, a, the reason of mediumship, for talking to their family members in heaven. And my mom had been gone several years, and I saw all the same signs you guys see. I saw the butterflies. I saw the rainbows. I heard the songs on the radio. I felt the goosebumps and the chills, and I felt all of these things that let me know that my mom was there. And that made me really happy. So I didn't talk to her, though, like I used to talk to all the people in heaven. And I just thought, of course I can't talk to my mom. That wouldn't be fair. How could God let me talk to my mom if none of them can talk to their mom or their dad or their sister or their brother? And so I assumed that this gift or this thing that I had was really only for you, not for me, which is our biggest mistake. 
We think that what we are is for the benefit of others. We have no idea that it's for ourselves too. And that's the purpose of today, is to show you that everything that you are and everything that you have not only is a gift to everybody else in the world, it's also a gift to yourself. But I didn't know that. So I was at Pam's house. This is my friend Pam. Say hi, Pam. This is my friend Pam. I was at her house and she says, well, why don't you do some readings here? And so people would come to see me and I would go to Pam's house and people would come and sit at Pam's table and I would talk to them all about this and there was this lady that was sitting there and she had come to see me and her mom came. And when her mom came, her mom was telling me all these things. She says, what's, the, what's so important about the initials VW? The lady says, I don't know. I was like, huh, because the lady here is telling me about VW. And I said, well, what's important about July for you? She says, no, nothing. I said, what about anybody in your family, anything? She says, no. I said, did your mom pass a lung cancer? And did it really bother her that she lost her hair? She's like, no, my mom's alive. And I'm very confused now because I had learned up to this point that whatever they say, they're right, right? So I'm thinking like this lady, maybe I'm confused. Maybe I'm misinterpreting. She said, well, do you have, I asked her, do you have like two sisters and a brother? And she's like, no. And I'm like, God, what is going on? And then I heard a laughter that brought me back about 20 years, and it was my mom's laughter. And so I stopped for a minute, and I said, holy crap, my dad's name is Vernon William, VW. My mother's birthday is in July. Holy, oh my God, I have two sisters and a brother. Oh my God, and my mom passed a lung cancer, and my mom got upset about her wig, and I was like, I'm giving me a reading right now. <laughs> and then it blew up in my brain. Holy crap, this isn't a gift. This is an awareness. This is a knowledge. There's, there's a path. If I can talk to my mom, you could talk to your mom. That's crazy. So I started to recognize that that was true although I didn't know how to tell you to talk to your mom. And I didn't know how I could just call my mom and say, hey, could you come and give me an answer? I had no idea that that was even possible. And so in 1998, November, I had a spiritual experience that broke my brain basically into three pieces. A human piece, the piece I always respond to, some other piece, that voice that goes off in our brain that we're like, no, I'm not going to listen to you, but if something that you tell me happens in three days, I'm going to wish like hell I did listen to you. And I'm going to say, oh, I wish I would have listened to myself. Everybody in this room has done that because there's an internal voice inside of you that speaks. And that internal voice is your spirit self. And so now I'm aware during this experience that I have a human self and I have a spirit self and they were doing stuff. And there was this other part of me. And that other part of me was witnessing or watching the occurrences. So I was fully aware in this experience of three parts of myself. A human brain, which is the part of me that while this experience was happening, was in the middle of an argument with my husband, really arguing with him. And this other part, of, but those words weren't coming out of my mouth. They were in my humanity. They were there. They were coming. They were coming into my brain, but they wouldn't come out my mouth. And there was a truth I was telling him, and I wasn't happy about it, and I was arguing, and I was upset over it on the phone. And then all of a sudden, when this occurred, and I noticed, some part of me noticed that what I was trying to say was not coming out of my mouth. And then this other part of me started to talk, and that's what started coming out of my mouth. And when I heard that, there was this other part of me watching it. And I thought, well, that's interesting. That part of me is saying exactly what that bitch part of me is saying, excuse my language, but what that bitchy lady of me was saying, it was saying the same exact thing, but really freaking nice. And he was listening. And I was amazed and I couldn't believe it. And I realized, Something's happening. I didn't know what happened. And so as I was coming back and all those three parts of myself were like uniting into one piece, I had this awareness that I now had three different perspectives of everything. Go to the grocery store, make the bed, go to work, don't go to work, do this, don't do that. 
Then I called my dad and I said, I think you're right. I think I'm crazy. Now I have these voices. I don't know what to do with them. I can't understand how this is possible. And when I hung up the phone with him, I turned around and I saw me. I saw dead me or the soul me, the part of me that I could see through. And I was like, whoa, you're here now? I'm alive still. Like, how are you here now? And then I realized that I am body and soul and that other part that observes that interaction between the two things. So I learned in that four minute experience absolutely everything I had ever asked God, myself, the universe, creator, the earth, the trees. What the heck is going on with my life for crying out loud? What is wrong with me? Why can't I make my life work? How come I'm not happy? How come I do all these things for people and I don't feel love back? Like I don't get it. But after that experience, I understood everything. But there was no amount of words and there still is not today any amount of words that I could stand up here and really explain the complexity of the information that I have inside of me that you all have inside of you. Because every time you think you know something, you realize you know nothing. And so what I'm gonna share with you today is an awareness called Almapura, which means pure soul. When my daughter and I were trying to discuss like what happened to me, what was this experience that occurred, she asked me, well, mom, what did it do for you? And I said, well, it cleaned out my soul, basically. It took everything that I thought I was and everything that I thought I knew I was, and it kind of wiped it all away, and now I have this other awareness, and I can teach people how to do that. I can teach them how to find those three parts of themselves so they can heal, so they can heal themselves, so they can heal others, so they can realize that the person standing here doesn't have any bigger gift than you do. And that if you go for a session or a reading or a counseling or a spiritual experience, that they don't know more than you. We don't know more than you. Maybe we know different ways that you could try to try to get there. And that's what I'm going to try to explain to you today. Alma Pura means pure soul in Spanish. I'm Cuban, and that's how um, this came. So, okay. When Ronnie and I were talking about um, putting this workshop together, one of the things that we were talking about is I had had a couple people come to see me um, for the purpose of connecting with their higher self or their relatives and their friends, and they started to tell me stories about different experiences from a spiritual perspective that they had had. And so some of them were saying to me, I don't know if I'm doing it right. I think I'm wrong. I read this book. And this book showed me this thing. And, you know, I talked to so-and-so over at this place, or I had a phone session with this lady, and I'm really confused now. And I thought, that doesn't make any sense. You shouldn't be confused. You shouldn't walk into a place where maybe you're going to see me or Ronnie or somebody else and walk out of there feeling like you don't know more or you don't know less. or you, you need to come out of there knowing that you are powerful and that you know everything and that all of the answers are inside of you. And so because I was hearing all these discrepancies from different people about their spiritual journey, I kind of had to take a minute and look at mine. You know, after that four-minute experience happened, I did go to my church. I spoke to my pastor. He escorted me out. He told me, thank you. We don't need people like you in our church. That's not a knock against Catholicism, though. And it's not a knock against Christianity. It's simply, it's simply I was going to talk to you in Spanish. I can totally tell my grandma's here because I was going to say, simplemente es porque. So, but anyway, um, and that simply just really is something that I felt very broken by. And so I went to the Barnes and Noble in Schomburg and I walked through the aisles and I looked at all the books and I picked up about a hundred self-help books and I picked up religious books and I picked up guidance books and I picked them up and as I picked them up I would like read like the foreword or I would flip through and then my hands would start to tingle and if I held the book a little too long my hands would start to burn, burn like where like you, you know you touch a pot pan and you drop it. And so then I was like, oh, that's a sign. I'll find the book, 
And I checked every, like 60, 70 books. I'm not kidding you. I was there for hours checking books. And obviously, none of the books is anything that he wanted me, God, to read. So I could not find one book in the Barnes & Noble that helped me. And I couldn't find any pastor or church that would give me any time of day. So I was driving home from the Barnes & Noble. And this thought popped into my head. And it said, Corinthians 2.5. And I thought, Corinthians 2.5, okay, that's probably a sign. So I went home and I opened the Bible, my grandfather's Bible, and I looked at it. And it was a verse from the Bible that is on the front of my um, business cards that says that your faith should not be in the power and the, uh, the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. And that struck me. And so I sat there for a little bit with the Bible, and then I kept reading and reading and reading. And then all of a sudden, literally felt somebody smack me in the back of the head. And she, my soul, that other part of me, that voice in your brain that y'all have, said, how's your hands? And they weren't burning. So that's the day I realized that the only book that I would read in my journey would be the Bible. And that's how it was all the way up until last year when my grandmother in heaven said, you can read now, I've had a blast. I've read like 45 books, it's awesome. <laughs> um, so the things that I'm gonna share with you and talk to you about today are not from a book. I can't refer you or point you to a book or a course of behavior that you should take. I'm just here to show you that there, are a, that there is a path, a unique path for you, that you can find that path. This is how I went about it. Um, I hope that some of that the way that I discovered that and the way that I learned that will help you get to where you can find oneness within yourself because we all really are just one thing. And so Almapura is a collection of understanding as my four minute experience has broadened itself over the last 16 years that it has just grown. And like I said, it was like all this information and I've had to discern it over the years. So I didn't have words to tell you. The words are still coming. The information is still coming. The awareness from that is still coming. I'm not done. I have about 100 books in my brain. So this was very difficult for me in a way to put together because every piece leads to every other piece. Every single thing that I teach, that I talk about, that I try to connect you with, I can touch that or touch this or touch that and touch that and it's all the same thing, just expressed differently. And the end result is that we're one. And that all the answers I have, you have. And that if you do come to see me and we have a session, guess what? I don't know anything till you walk in the door anyway, because I have to talk to your soul. So any answers I have the ability to give you in a session or in a conversation with you isn't coming from me. It's coming from your soul, which is why in the Bible there's this part that says, that to be very careful about the people that you connect with that do spiritual work. Because in the Bible it says, don't visit with people that do this. Don't visit with mediums and fortune tellers and all of these things. And the reason it says is because they will give you meaning from their mind. From their mind. In other words, there's a part of them, their mind, their ego self, the conditioned human being that is translating a truth. And that truth is coming through them and through how they see the world. And you have to be careful of that. Even when you translate your own life and your own experiences, you're seeing them through your glasses, through your perception, which is why you can have three people in one room, one experience, but you have three different stories about that experience because three people are gonna view it differently than any single person.